Okay. So yeah, what we're going to look at today is basically what happens when you have Bob, Joe, the two laptops, and Bob here, and we have Joe. And when you get a switch, you put a switch in the middle. Pass each and let's say zero slash six. And this goes into zero slash three. Again, it doesn't matter what port, what 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 connections you, you connect in. Now, one of the things that people sort of get confused a lot of the time is that you can see the screen packet tracer screen here, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you have Bob is 192.168.1.1 and Joe is 192.168.1.2. So we looked last week at the OSI model. And one of the things we said, the switch is switch as per MAC address. They don't look at the IP details. So basically there's your switch there. Ethernet, you can see here, operates at layer two, the data link layer. The layer two address is the MAC address. But one of the things when I started learning about this that confused me is that, hold on, when you connect into Bob here and you assign an IP address, to Bob of 192.168.1.1 and Joe 192.168.1.2, you should be able to ping them. Yeah. Uh, so ping 192.168.1.2. Yeah. So, what we're going to, so one of the things we're going to address today is for like, um, so, sorry about the pun, is that when you've got two devices, even though the switch doesn't look at IP address, it doesn't, switch doesn't know what an IP address is beyond its intelligence. The switch's language deals with layer two, deals with the MAC address. But how come you don't ping, Bob doesn't ping Joe's MAC address? And how come Joe is in the, like, how come, when you ping 192.168.1.2, it's able to connect to it. But if we change Joe's IP address to 192.168.2.2, which is in a different network, the ping is going to fail. This was one of the things that, you know, that kind of when they started learning about networking kind of threw me. I was saying, well, hold on, the switch doesn't switch per IP address, but you can see when you change the IP address, all of a sudden, it's not pinging. But how does the switch know that the IP address 1.2 and 1.1 are in two different networks? Does that make sense or am I just confusing everybody, including myself here? No. So that's what we're going to look at. Because um, again, I need to understand you, the switch does not go beyond this dark line here, this, the, the, the black line here. Switch only looks at the MAC address. Um, the protocol that the the, the 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 language that the switch uses, the 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 mechanism that switch uses to connect to devices within the same network, is Ethernet, and that's a layer two service, it's a layer two protocol. Okay. Now, a quick history about Ethernet. You're not going to get this in the exam, but it's sort of good to know the chronological order of it in terms of the dates. Uh, Xerox, which is the photocopying, scanning, printing crowd, developed Ethernet back in 1973. And that time had a speed of three megabits per second. Remember, networking speed is usually measured in bits per second. Some other companies jumped on board, such as IBM, Intel, and became standard, standardized. So when we say standardized, you have this uh, IEEE standard, IEEE 802.3.
And basically what is standardized is, is that it can be used by any companies, any there, you know, any company can connect in. So if we go back here, we we know that we're pretty safe that this could be a IBM lap or a HP laptop, this could be a Dell laptop, it could be running a, a, a version of Windows, and they will use the same protocol, the Ethernet, to move information at a layer two level across multiple vendors. The IEEE stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. We're going to be seeing the, this term come up quite a lot in terms of networking, IEEE, because a lot of the networking standard, standards will have IEEE numbers with it, namely VLAN, Spanning Tree, HSRP, uh, CDP, so yeah, we, we, um, LLDP, so yeah, we'll go through them uh, um, as time progresses. So 1995, you had fast Ethernet at a speed of 100 megabits per second. 2000 gigabit connections, 10, uh, 10, 2002, 10 gigabit connections, 2007, 100 gigabit connections. Now where the user connects into, you're looking at really gigabit connections now. So, you know, typically uh, most switches now, you're not going to have fast Ethernet, you're not going to have 100 meg, and um, they usually be gigabit connections. Um, where a user in an office, that's all you need. You'll only need really, even 100 meg, even 100 megabits for typical office day-to-day -day work is sufficient. You know, do you, because you could have, you could have Bob and Joe connected into a switch here, and you could have an ETH, a, a connection to the internet, and the internet connection mightn't be, 50 megabits per second. So where a user connects in to a switch port, 100 meg, gigabit usually is enough. You're never gonna have 10 gig um, connections for a user. You don't need it, it's overkill, okay? Now where you might see a higher end connection is if you brought us a router in here. So you can see here, Bob and Joe, let me just show you, Bob and Joe here, in this case would use the ethernet or fast ethernet ports, which are 100 meg. But then what you do between the router and the switch is you typically connect a gigabit connection, which is a thousand mega, which is a thousand megabits per second. Okay. And um, now in a, like if you were in a data center or anything like that, you know, you're going to be using 10 gig, hundred gig, 40 gig connections using fiber connections, fiber optics and, uh, SFPs and QSFPs and stuff like that. And um, we'll look at that sometime in the future. Okay, so where was I? Yeah, so you, there, there's, there's a history of it there. All right, and um, we'll go back to our slide. Ethernet operates at layer two of the OSI model. And um, if you look at layer two, again, we went to, we done this last week. You got your seven layers of the OSI model. You have, let's see, da, 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 da. You got layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, and layer seven. Yeah. The Ethernet operates at layer two, the, which is the data link layer. The data link layer is split into two different layers. You've got your, your MAC layer and your LLC layer. The LLC layer is, is more for CCNP, it's more advanced topics. So basically what that is, is it prepares information as it passes between the data link layer and the network layer. The MAC layer is what we're going to be looking at today, is your layer two address system that is put in place. So what it does is it puts a stamp, a MAC address on the data link layer to bring it from, to so the switch can know where it needs to be sending out the ports. Okay, yeah, Pablo, uh, a good, yeah, a good mnemonic is, People see do people do need to see Pamela Anderson. Um, it is a good tip in, in, in terms of remembering the order that you need to put your uh, into. Okay. All right, any questions on that? We're not going too fast. I'm good. Cool. 
All right. So when we're looking at Ethernet, we've got a multiple different types of communication. So you have unicast communication. Unicast communication is simply one message from one device to one device. One message from one device to one device. So uni, UD, if you look at the unicycle is, you know, uni is Latin for one. You know, a unicycle is a wheel, a bicycle with two, one, one wheel. And um, so you look, you know, for example, an example of a unicycle, uh, uni, an example of a unicycle, example of a unicast message would be a ping, simple ping. So you have a switch here, you have all these devices in the same network, same IP subnet anyway, 172.16. So let's say we have Bob here. Joe and Bob here. Now Joe, uh, Bob here is 172.16.1.10. He wants to just ping, send a message across to Joe. But well, what would happen is the packets they'll go across into the switch, and the switch would send it out here and go into Joe's laptop. Now, Tom and Al will not get those messages. Yeah, unicast, one message from one device to one device. Okay, next type of communication you have is broadcast. So broadcast is one message from one device to oh. all devices. So one message from one device to all devices. So let's have a look at broadcast here. Let's, uh... So let's say again, if Bob here sends a message into the switch, what's going to happen with a broadcast message? The switch is instructed to send that frame out all ports. So it's going to go across to Joe and Tom and Al. Now there's a special, remember we're talking, we're still looking at layer two. There's a layer two special broadcast address, which is all the Fs, 12 Fs. Remember the format of a MAC address, MAC addresses go from zero to F, hexadecimal. The last character you can have in a hex, the last number you can have as possible is, is F. So F, 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 12 Fs is the highest number you can make from using 12 hex characters, if that makes sense. It's a very last address. The, the idea is, so you have a broadcast layer two address, but you've also got a broadcast layer three address, and it works with the same thing. The difference is that the broadcast layer two address is always FFFFFFF. The broadcast layer three address will depend on the subnet. Okay, so, Let's say, for example, let's just delete this for a second. Let's say, for example, we had I'm going to come back to that in a second. We had Bob and Joe here, okay? And we're connected to a network here. Okay. So Tom, Bob, Joe. Oh, done him already. Okay. Joe is here. Tom, Bob, and Joe. Okay, so uh, you've got ah, we'll we'll talk about that now in a second, probably. Yeah, and um, 
I have a switch down here. And we got Sue down here. Okay, so let's say Bob sends a broadcast message. Okay, so Bob, send, Bob sends a broadcast, say BC broadcast message. Who gets it? All right, and type your answers in there. So does Tom get this message? Who gets it? Who in this networks or companies get it? Does Tom get it? So Bob sends a broadcast message. Tom will get it, yeah? Tom and Joe. Will Joe get it? Yes. Okay. Will Sue get it? No. No. Why not? Because she's on a different network. Exactly. Broadcast messages only go to devices within the same network. So remember, we talked about this last week. It switches provide communication between devices in the same network. Bob, Tom, and Joe are in the same network. So the very last um, address, so let's say if all of these guys here, Tom, Bob, and Joe are in the 192.168.1.0 network, the broadcast address for that would be 192.168.1.255 is a broadcast address. Uh, 255 is the maximum number of IPs you can have within that range, is it? There's no 256 is in IP. The very last address is, two, is, is 255. Okay. And there's, there's a reason for that. It's to do with binary. We'll talk about that in uh, a couple of weeks. Okay. So yeah, so you're never going to see a subnet. You're never going to see an IP address with 256 in it. So the broadcast, the layer three, the IP broadcast address because because they're in the 192.168.1.0 network their broadcast address is going to be 192.168.1.255 it's the very last address in their network now if sue was in here her broadcast address, her let's say she was in the 192.168.2.0 network her broadcast address is going to be 192.168.2.255 255. So the broadcast address changes, the, sorry, the layer three broadcast address changes depending on the actual layer three subnet that the person is in. The, the layer two broadcast, the FFFFFFF, that remains the same. So the broadcast address for this network, the layer two network, uh, network is FFFFF. The layer two broadcast address on this network is FFFFFF. Okay, so if you look at here, you can say how many net, how many networks do we have? Well, well depending on what we have here, we've just got two. We've got two interfaces. Network number one. And network number two. You can have 10 switches connected together, they're still on the same network. Still on the same network, because again, you have to think what do switches do? Switches provide communication within and between devices in the same network. So again, Bob sends a broadcast message here. Tom will get it, Joe will get it. I will also get it. Sue won't, because routers kill broadcast messages okay and that you know and there's a good reason for that too because if routers didn't if routers sent broadcast messages remember broadcast message goes to everyone all, all people if routers sent broadcast messages let's look at our, 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 our fluffy white cloud our fluffy white cloud here is made of hundreds of thousands of routers connected together so if router sent a broadcast message away as switch would, we wouldn't have the internet because the internet would be full of messages, pings and packets going around, 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 forever and ever and ever. The limitation to a broadcast is the actual router. A router will stop a broadcast messages. A switch can't stop a broadcast message. 
It switches no power to stop a broadcast message. It will keep sending and sending and sending. All right, is that okay, guys? All right. Just a quick question. Yeah. Um, let's say for a real world example, you said it likes a ping is this an example of a, a, a unicast message? Yeah. What would be a real world example of a broadcast message? I well, say in I, command prompt. Absolutely. I was actually going to look at that. Um, so basically the broadcast message you see is you, they're, they're transparent. You won't see them, but they're happening in, in the background. So ARP is an example of a broadcast message. I'm going to look at ARP and we're going to look at a ping today. Um, in the next in the next five minutes, we're going to start looking at them too today, and we're going to use GNS and we're going to actually start inspecting the packet levels and um, to see the differences. So you, you'll you, you'll see the differences up close between ping, which goes to one device, and ARP, which will go to all devices. Okay, um, it's a good question. Another type of message which is multicast. Now we're going to look at multicast in more in depth later on the course, but multicast is one message from one device to a group of devices. So multicast goes to a group of devices. Okay, um, so for example, if you, you were sending a message and you wanted it to go, I'll keep things very, very simple here, you wanted to go to here and here and here, but not this guy down here. Well, that would be an example of a multicast address uh, or multicast message. Routers will use multicast messages to talk to other routers. Switches will use multicast messages to talk to other switches. So multicast messages are really more specific for similar type kind of devices. Uh, right. right, now let me just put this up here. So we're going to look at broadcast message here now. Let me just get my details up here. Okay. So I'm going to use Bob and I'm going to use Joe. Um, I'm going to delete this here. We have Joe over here. So Bob is 192.168.1.1. Joe is 192.168.168. He's going to be 192.168.1.2. Okay. And uh, snip this one second. Okay. So, Bob and Joe. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I have this set up here. I'm going to use what's known as GNS, right? So GNS is basically a it's running your own. You can build your own networks on your own PC using GNS. Now, there's, there's a lot involved in it. So Packet Tracer pretends to build networks, okay? So Packet Tracer is a simulator. It pretends no actual packets. So if I'm using Packet Tracer to send information between Bob and Joe, it will pretend to send packets, but no packets actually get sent. No communication gets sent here. But with GNS, if I'm sending here between PC1 and PC2, it has its own little operating system in here. This is a type of Linux. Um, so I can click here, go to console. And I can actually send packets between PC1 and PC2. So this is what's known as an emulator. And now I'll say, if I can, uh, okay, so there's PC1. So let's say PC1 is Bob. I'm going to give P1 
PC1 and IP address of IP 192.168.1.1. It checks for a duplicate IP, and there you have it. So it has this Bob, I'm going to call it PC1 Bob, and Joe, let me just say PC1. PC1, I got PC2. Okay, PC1, PC2. PC2 is 192.1.2. So I'm going to go over here, the GNS, the PC2 console. And I'm going to get PC2. IP 192.168.1.2. Okay, so PC1, 1.1.1, PC2, 192.168.1.2. Yeah. So let's say, for example, I want to see what my MAC address is. So you have our IP address. I'm going to say ARP space minus A. ARP, even. Okay, IF IP config. Uh, da, 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 da. IP Okay, there you go. Just took a while. Right, so you can see here. Bob's IP address 192.1.1, and its MAC address is ending. I'm just going to look at the four, the last four characters, 6800. So you can see, uh, I'm going to put the MAC in red here, okay? Bob is 6800. So 6800. And the other MAC address, PC2, IP space all, IP address space all. Show IP, oh Jesus. The MAC address is ending at 6801, okay? 6800 and 6801. Okay, so what we want to do is PC1 here wants to ping PC2. Okay, so you're going to see what it'll do is it's going to create a ping message. Let's draw this out. And the, the actual data will be ping of data of, of, of ping is echo. So it's an echo request. So when you send a ping, you go echo, and the ping will go across to the device, and the ping will spend back an echo response. Echo request, echo response. Okay. It's like it gets its term ping from or echo from the World War II submarines where it uses sonar to find how close or how far the enemy submarine is. Um, and from the echo response, it can tell that information. So the source IP address, so again, so this is the data. The echo request is the data as per the OSI model. The source IP address is going to be 192.168. Dot one dot one. The destination IP address is going to be one nine two one six eight dot one dot two. The source MAC address is going to be I'll put that in red six eight zero zero. The destination MAC address is going to be six eight zero one. Okay. Now let me go back. Source IP address, 192.168.1.1. How do we know what the source IP address is? So when I go into the PC and I run a ping, 192.168.1.1 or 1.2, yeah? We know that the source IP address is gonna be 192.1. So the operating system of the PC knows its own IP address. 
So it'll say, okay, I'm pinging 192.168.1.2. So the source IP address of this packet is going to be 1.1. The destination IP address of this packet is going to be who the ping is intended to go to, which will be 192.168.1.2. Does that make sense? The source MAC address is the operating system knows its own MAC address. The operating system told me its MAC address is 6800. The destination MAC address. How is the operating system of PC1 going to know the destination MAC address of PC2? How will it know? ARP request. It will send an ARP message. Exactly. It will send an ARP message. Because it has to have some mechanism to find the, the layer two address of PC2. PC1 needs, in fact, the switch here, remember what the switch does. The switch only looks at the red font. The switch only looks at the MAC address. It doesn't look at the IP information. So the most important information or most, some of the most important information is actually missing at the moment. So this ping is temporarily paused. We cannot send a ping to from PC1 across to PC2 if we don't know the MAC address of PC2. So another message is actually sent. And that message is an ARP. So the ARP will be sent automatically by PC1 to PC2. And you have the data over here. So the data is going to say ARP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. I want enough space to write that in. Address Resolution Protocol. Okay. And the actual data will say who has MAC of 1.2. Tell me I'm 1.1. So if the PC1 is sending his ARP message, remember the ping is temporary paused. Look, it's paused. Why is the ping paused? Because the information that we need to send the ping from PC1 to PC2 is incomplete because we don't have the MAC address of PC2. So PC1 has to send an ARP message before it can send the ping to, uh, and the job, of, it's like an ARP is like, like a scout. It's sent ahead of the ping. And the ARP message is to find out the MAC of PC2. So the source IP address is going to be 192.168.1.1. Destination IP address is going to be 192.168.1.255. Source MAC is going to be 6800. Destination MAC address is going to be what's your always your destination MAC address? 12s. F, 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 F. So that there is going to come in, will be sent first, is going to come into the switch. The switch is going to look at the F, 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 the 12 Fs, and will send it out all ports. So we could have other PCs connected to this switch. We have a PC here and a PC here, and they will all get this ARP message. So PC2 could get it, PC3 will get it, PC4 will get it. The only PC3 will get it and look, and it look at the data and it'll say, oh, you're looking for the MAC address of 192.1.2, I'm PC3, I'm 1.3, I'm not gonna respond back. So PC3 will kill the R. PC4 will also kill the R because it's 1.4. But PC2 will respond back to the R request from PC1 and say, 
this is gonna get again kind of bit. Let me just clean up some of this chicken scratch. Getting a bit messy. PC2 will respond back and say, source Mac, uh, source IP will be 192.168.1.2. Destination IP address will be 192.168.1.1. Source MAC address is going to be 6801. Destination MAC address is going to be 6800. Why? It, PC2 is going to know the destination MAC address of 680 of PC1 because it's responding back to this guy here. It's flipping it across. Does that make sense? Yeah. If somebody sends you a letter and they have the source address as in London and you're replying back to them, your response is going to be London. So that's what we're doing here. PC2, the data will contain, will say the message, ARP response. The ARP is the protocol and it's going to say 1.2 has MAC address of 6801. That ARP message will go back into PC2. We'll go back into PC1. PC1 then will look and go, ah, oh, 1.2's MAC address is 6801. Then it can send a ping message because it knows the MAC address of PC2 is 6801. It, it can actually fill in the rest of this information and proceed with the ping. All of this takes milliseconds, a tenth of a millisecond or 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds is like one hundredth of a second. It happens extremely fast. So what you do is when you send, send a ping, you don't see the ARP. The ARP happens in the background. But the ARP, if the ARP didn't happen, then PC1 would never know what the MAC address of PC2 is. So we wouldn't be able to ping it. Let me show you on GNS. So the reason why I'm using GNS is because GNS could actually show you behind the scenes traffic going across. So you have PC1 here, and I'm just going to give the uh, IP 192.168.1.1, and PC2 uh, 192.168.2. Yeah, and the MAC address was 6801, wasn't it? And the MAC address of this was 6800. Okay, so let's go in, open this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run Wireshark. Now, at the moment, what, and the thing is, what I'm trying to say is once the PC knows that, the PC will store the MAC address of PC2. PC1 will store the MAC address of PC2 in its ARP table. So the next time it communicates with PC2, it doesn't have to send an ARP message to find the MAC address of 1.2. It has it stored locally in its ARP table. So the PC has an ARP table. The operating system has an ARP table, which is IP to MAC information. Okay. Let's see where this is. So let me just open up this, do a Wireshark packet capture. So Wireshark is a program that is used to, pack, to, to capture packets coming in and out of an interface. 
it's free um, and you can install it on your PC and it'll, it will capture, it will, it's a sniffing uh, program and it'll um, capture all the details. So it's going to capture here, you can see the magnifying glass. It's going to capture any information, even PC1 going across to PC2. I hope, as long as it's, let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to run this ping. Let's just do an R first. So you can see here, PC1's R table is empty because it never has, it hasn't communicated yet with PC2. So it hasn't any details of PC2 yet. So I'm just going to open the ping, 192.168.1.2. Yeah. There we go. And you can see the response. So it sends four messages, one, two, three, four, five. And it gets a response back. It's seen these response from 1.2. The ICMP, you can see the sequence numbers, one, two, three, four, five. The TTL is talking about that again. And the time it took to respond back was one millisecond. With one thousandth of a second. Now you're probably saying, hey, hold on. Where's the ARP message? Nope. 6801 has, is 1.2. We didn't see the ARP message because it doesn't show us the ARP happening. ARP happens behind the scenes. So the only way you, you can actually know that the ARP was, was, was delivered was by looking at this. Just open this up. Sorry, I'm trying to get all set up. So you can see here the first message was sent was the MAC address 6800. Where is it going? It's a broadcast. F -f 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 -f. Source IP, source MAC address 6800, destination MAC address FFFFF. Source IP 192.168.1.1, destination IP 192.168.1.2. And it will say in the data, it will say if we go back to this, who has the MAC address of 192.168.1.2? This is me, 192.168.1.1. The next packet that comes in, comes in how, like, do you see the time here? This is time in milliseconds, in seconds. So zero is a second. So it comes to zero, 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 so it starts. And then it takes zero tenths, zero tenths, zero one hundredths, zero one thousandths, one ten thousandth of a second to respond back with the MAC address of, so this is coming back from PC2. This is the response back from PC2 to say, hey, PC1, this is my MAC address. 192.1.2 is at 6801. And once that happens, then the first message is going across. So you get your echo message. ICMP, by the way, is a protocol, Internet Control Message Protocol. You can see your echo request is going across. Echo request across to 1.2 and echo response back. Echo request, echo response. Why are the messages? Because we sent five messages, five pings. One, two, three, four, five. Any questions on that, guys? All good, cool, all right. This is the good thing about recording as well, like you can go back over all of this um, and you can see it there. But remember, we sent, we even though you, you're pressing enter on the ping, the ping isn't sent first. In order for PC1 to find the MAC address of PC2, it has to send an ARP message. An ARP is a broadcast and it will go across into the switch 
the switch will look at the layer to the destination address, which is FFFFFFF, and that tells the switch to send this message out all ports. So if we had 20 PCs connected to this switch, everyone will get that broadcast message. In fact, the only device that will not get that broadcast message will be PC1. The switch will never send a broadcast message out the port on which it came in on. Okay. All right. So you can see this, this structure of a MAC address here, 12 hexadecimal characters. A MAC address is split into two parts. The first six characters of a MAC address represents the company that made the, the, the card, the network card. So it, it's every NIC card or network interface card on a PC. If you look at it or a laptop, it's going to have a NIC card the NIC card is typically where you will connect your Ethernet cable to. And each NIC will have a unique MAC address. The first six characters represent the company that makes that card. Okay. It's called the OUI, Organizational Unique Identifier. 0019D1 is the OUI for this uh, for this. PC. Let's say that could be Dell. Then the next six characters are assigned by that specific company, 22DCF3. The next one then could be 22DCF4, 22DCF5, 22DCF6. So you could say here, let's say this is Dell, Dell laptop. We have another laptop over here, and this could be Dell as well. And the then this is the next laptop that is built, so it's going to be 0019D1, which is the OUI, the Organizational Unique Identifier, which globally recognizes Dell. It's globally, so you can actually so everyone will know who what what whom what company made uh, the NIC 0019D1, and then it'll be. 22DCF4. Max go from zero to F. What happens if we skip some and it goes to 22DCF5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. What's the next one after this? 0019D1. What's the next one then? 0019D1. Then you're going to have 22D. Oh, actually, this is going to be quite a difficult one. Two two d Because remember, F is a very large, there's no Gs. So what's going to happen here? It's going to go back to zero. And you're going to carry one across to the next one. That's going to be zero. You're going to carry the one across. C and one is D. So that would be D, D. I, that, that, that's very confusing, guys. Sorry. I am, that was just what was given to me there. So, yeah. Let me just use a different example. So let's say we had, sorry with that example. That's too confusing. Zero, zero, one, nine, D, one. Okay. And the first MAC address was 0000000. 000 000 000 000. And the next one was 00191, 0000001, 0000002. Okay, 000 0000F because it goes 01234567899, A, B, C, D, E, F. What's the next character going to be? 0019D1. Then it's going to be zero, 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 zero. One. 
one and zero. Zero. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. And what you can do is, like I said, the, the zero, the, if you can go to your PC here um, and do command prompt and IP config space forward slash all, you can see here. Now with all this VM stuff running here on this PC. Um, so yeah, that's VM. Da, 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 da. I should use this one here. Zero zero five zero five six. So what I can do is I can go online. One second. And Mac address vendor lookup. Go across here and I can type in the MAC address that I'm looking for. So 005056, 005056, enter uh, VMware. Yeah. So VMware globally owned this. Okay. So let's say we have uh, 00000. Who owns that? No. Someone owns it. Zero, 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 zero. Xerox. Yeah. Xerox invented Ethernet. Ethernet is your MAC address. Yeah. So if you think about it, if you invent this protocol and you have an address, you're going to say, I want my, my bags is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and the own loads is 0, the own, I think, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, up, up into 9, is this? Yeah, they still own 9. Then it changes A. Someone else owns A. I'm wrong. B is Fujitsu, is it? Matrix. C is Cisco. Yeah. Yeah. Next, E is, D is Fujitsu, right, well, yeah, I don't know if Fujitsu is in there somewhere. Yeah, so you can see here. So these are all different companies. These are the OUIs, four, six characters represent the OUIs. Organizational Unique Identifier. Okay, cool. Um, All right, so next thing. Just quick thing on the cables. Again, this is really an old uh, picture. You, you never see this. You've got your PC will connect into, and this is your NIC. This will go into a switch. And then your switch will provide communication between devices on the same network. And then you'll have an uplink, which is usually the last port on the switch that will connect you into a router. The router will bring you into a different network. It's a nice, neat picture of a switch. Nice cable ties there around it. Although you should have some sort of a cable um, there to, to, to kind of keep everything in place. But yeah, it's nice and neat. This is one I had to clean up a few years ago. Yeah. You don't want to be working in a company with a with network like that. That's it's horrible, horrible. Um, yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> just need a sign saying, please, please do not touch. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't just walk away. And, <laughs> yeah, like, I've been there, done that. Huh? Been there, I've done that. Yeah, it's just horrible. It's just not a, 
Yeah, and the 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 the, the, the thing is right the 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 the, the, the rack um, was meant to be had had a lock in it, but you couldn't lock it because the the, 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 the first of all the, the switches were all out on this the, this I don't know what it was it was an aircon thing and we just on it here and it was just just madness like you know it was just everywhere it was just crazy trying to troubleshoot with something going going down is just forget about it you know it's impossible so yeah. Yeah, um, so if you take an Ethernet cable and you open it up, you'll have eight different colors. So you take a standard Ethernet cable, eight different colors. So you got light green, green, light orange, orange, light blue, blue, and light brown, brown. Okay, and they will go into obviously it has the other end. There's different standards. So this is kind of old. You probably wouldn't have got this on the example. I suppose it's, it's important to know. You've got two different sort of common standards. You've got T568A and T568B. Now, they're very, very similar. The only difference is A and B is B1 and 2 are crossed over. No, 3 and 6 and 1 and 2. 3 and 6 and 1 and 2, yeah. Oh yeah, orange and green are swapped, yeah? So when you have an A on both ends, it's a straight through. When you have a B on both ends, it's a straight through. When you have an A on one end and a B on the other, it's a crossover cable. Depending on the devices that you connect into will dictate whether you need a straight through or a crossover cable. This is old because typically you won't need to do this anymore. Why? Because devices will automatically tell you, or will auto not automatically tell you, automatically sense what you're connecting into. But there used to be a rule, and the rule was light devices use a straight through cable. So light devices, it will either be a T568A on both ends or a T568B on both ends. So you're connecting the PC into a switch, straight through. Router into a switch, straight through. Sorry, all light devices use a straight through. Light devices use a crossover. PC to PC, crossover. If you've got two older PCs running Windows XP and you connected a straight through be between a PC and a PC, it would not work. You'd have to use a crossover cable. The reason why it's important to go through this is because on the exam, they could give you a scenario where it could have two PCs or PC connected into a switch. And you need to know what, uh, you know, that, you know, when you're connecting the PC into another PC, it is using a crossover cable. Show you that as well. Okay, so let's say, for example, I have a PC here. And we have a switch. And we have another switch. I got a router. And we got another router. And we got a PC. So let's say red is crossover. While blue is straight through. Okay, so PC to switch. Red or blue? Red. I oh, say blue, say blue, blue. Yeah. So PC to switch, straight through. Switch to switch? Red. Crossover, yeah. Switch to router? Straight through. Yeah. Router to router. Someone else. <laughs> uh, red. 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 Straight. Yeah. Yeah. Crossover. Router to router. Crossover. And then router to PC. Straight through. 
Blue. Red. Router to PC. A PC's interface is similar to a router's interface. Right. Because it can actually process traffic. It has a NIC, it has an IP address. A switch's interface doesn't have that information. So you look at the, the NIC on a... Uh, um, so yeah, so it, it's... So you connect a PC to a switch, they're different. You can assign an IP address to the NIC of a PC. You, so if I, if I look at port number six here on a switch, you can't assign an IP address to port number six on a switch, but you can assign an IP address to NICs on a router, but not on a switch. That's the way you kind of remember as well. So, okay. Any questions on that, guys? No. All right. Is this, you still follow this practice or is this gone? So, so most devices now you connect, it doesn't matter what you connect in. You connect a, a, a crossover between, um, or you connect a, you, excuse me, you connect a, a you connect a, a, a straight through between a PC and a router, it'll work because the devices will automatically, they auto, they are auto sense and they can change it around. They can logically change the, 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 the packets to deal with it. They can process it. So whether they can, like devices will process packets if it's a straight through or a crossover cable. And that's good because I, uh, I think a couple of years ago, I pulled every single cable out of our cabinets and put them all back in straight without thinking about it. And it worked. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, you were, yeah. A couple of years before that, you'd have problems because it, you'd have to depend on what, depends on what you're connected into. Okay. Uh, where are we now on this? Okay. Let me just close. I want to just close GNS here because the GNS does take over a lot of power. So let's close out this. GNS is very, very useful um, for using. And the only thing is it does take a lot of processing power. You need like, I mean, this device here I have is 16 gig of RAM. You need always, yeah, if you're, you know, if you're going to run GNS, it's always good as well. Have a good, uh, have a solid state drive. And um, solid state drives are, are brilliant, and um, they're they're much more efficient at processing information than your magnetic older drives, and um, because they don't have any moving parts. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna get a PC, get a PC with solid state drive. It's one of the biggest impacts on performance that you can have. Obviously, RAM is important, CPU is important, solid state drive is just as important, if not more. Having said that, you can't get a PC with two gig of RAM and then whack in the solid state drive. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> um, okay, one sec. This is not responding. There we go. Everyone still there? Yeah. Yeah, everyone still there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. I was just saying, GNS can be. Because I'm running off VMware, it can actually affect the, the Zoom call sometimes. And yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to look at how a switch switches. So before we, get to, before we had switches, we had hubs. So basically, a hub was the exact same. It looked like the same as a switch. Let me just show you a hub. We get one on uh, online here. And lots of ports. And really, there was you know to physically look at it, there's no difference. Here we get a hub. See the uh, da, 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 da.
Like there's an example of just a hub. Like just got lots of ports, like just like a switch. Yeah. Now the thing about a hub was layer one device. So if you had a PC here on the hub. You want to talk to this guy over here, or this guy over here, or this guy over here. So if you just wanted to talk to from, let's say, Bob, just wanted to talk to Joe. But what would happen is hubs had no way, it's layer one. So it doesn't use, it doesn't have any intelligence behind it. So basically you took took the ones and zeros, one, 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 zero, 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 and it just sent them out all ports. One 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 zero 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 zero. You can have it. One 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 zero 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 zero. One 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 zero 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 zero. So generating an awful lot of traffic because the whole, whole had no intelligence. It had no way of uniquely identifying Joe from Al, from Sue, from whoever. Layer one device. A layer one device meant it only operated at the physical layer, which is the ones and zeros. That was that gave problems because the more devices you connected to the hub, the more packets that will be sent, the slower your network will go. You know, maybe if you had four devices connected to the hub, it'd be fine because you didn't have to worry um, because the hub could possibly deal with it. But more devices you connected in, the slower your network became. And one of the guys told me a couple of years ago, he was he's just a contractor who goes off on different different sites, and um, he was into to an oil rig out offshore to fix the network out there. And when he connected up to when went to the cabinet, all the devices were connected into it. There was a hub right in the middle. And he says, right, there's your problem there, man. He's, there's a hub, you can't, you can't have a hub. You know, they're just gone. So took out the hub, put in the switch, re physically connected everything back, and everything worked perfect. See, the problem with a hub is, if you think about it, a hub is considered a layer one device. And a hub could only process one transmission. At a time. Could only process one transmission at a time. Yeah, so if Bob talked to Joe, Joe couldn't talk back, it would have to wait. Okay. What would happen if two devices sent information at the same time? You'd have a collision. You'd have a collision on the network. And basically what would happen is, this is a going back order, you don't need to know this. A jam signal would be sent to the device the same way around the world time before retransmitting your data. Okay. Devices on a hub was set to be one collision domain. Devices connected to the hub was set to be one collision domain, meaning that only one device can transmit data at any one time. Okay, think of a walkie talkie. Devices were connected to the hub was half duplex. Why was it half duplex? Next, even. Because you couldn't use, because half duplex means you can either send or receive, but you can't do both. Because only one device can talk at a time. Well, it had to be half duplex. Like a, like a walkie talkie. Walkie talkies have, well, the older walkie talkies are half duplex. You know, you say your piece and then you say over, and then the other guy talks and he says over and it goes around the forward, back around the forward. That's sort of hub. So the next step in the evolution of a switch wasn't a switch per se, 
it was what's known as a bridge. And the bridge didn't have many ports, maybe two ports or four ports. And a bridge was to connect, was used to connect hubs together. So you could have a hub here. And you'd have a bridge. And you have a hub. But the bridge was the first layer two device. So bridge could only have two ports, maybe. Let's say you put two ports here. You'd port zero and you'd port one. Okay. And what would happen with the bridge? So let's say you had this guy here, was a, his source back address was A, 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 A. This guy here is B, 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 B. This guy here is C, 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 C. So let's say B, 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 B wants to talk to uh, C, 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 okay? So I'm just gonna have the MAC address to do details in here. So the source MAC address is B, 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 B. Destination MAC address is A, 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 A. Okay, so that frame will go into a hub. What's the hub gonna do? Or yeah, let's say A, A, A and B, B, B wanna talk together. So what's the hub gonna do? It's gonna send it at all ports. It's gonna go into this, in, so A, A is gonna get it, but the hub will also send it across into port zero on the bridge. Okay. So the bridge will listen on port zero and we'll have a MAC address table. And update the MAC address table based on the source MAC address of the frame coming in. So this frame has just come in to the bridge on port zero. So the bridge will say, oh, I have just received a frame coming into me on port zero, port zero of the bridge, with a source MAC address of B, 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 B. What does it do? It updates the MAC address table because it knows there is a device connected to it on port zero with a source MAC address of BBBB. Now, it doesn't know where AAAA -A -A is because it hasn't received any correspondence from AAAA. -A -A, so it'll send it across here to the hub and CCC will get it. But CCC will ignore it because it's not for CCC, it's for AAAA. -A -A -A. Meanwhile, AAAA device will respond back. Okay, a second. So you got the source MAC address is going to be A, 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 A. You got the destination MAC address is going to be B, 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 B. Let me just clean off some of this chicken scratch. So this is going to go into the hub. What's the hub going to do? The hub is going to do what the hub does, which is send it out everywhere. Every message on a hub is a broadcast. So it'll go into B, 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 B. It'll also go into port zero on the bridge. Now, what will the bridge do? The bridge updates its MAC address table based on the source MAC address of the frame. So the bridge will go, oh, I'm just after receiving a, a frame with a source MAC address of A, 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 A. Update the MAC address table. And it's going to B, 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 B. Will the bridge need to send this frame over for outport one? No. No, because this, the bridge knows that A, 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 A and B, 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 B are in the same segment here. All right. So it knows that if the bridge has received this frame on port zero, 
will then also the device connected uh, BBBB has also received that frame. Because they're connected to the same port on the bridge. They're connected to a device which is connected to the same port on the bridge. Does that make sense? Yep. And CCCC will do the same thing. And the bridge will learn about CCCC. And if you had another device down here, D, 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 D. So what you're going to have within seconds is a fully populated MAC address table on the bridge. And it means that these two guys here, CCCC and DDDD, will be able to talk to each other. And AAAA and BBBB will be able to talk to each other without information. The bridge will keep these conversations separate. So it will allow for more conversations with less collisions. If this was all connected into one hub, you're going to have a lot more collisions, but at least the bridge keeps these two separate areas collision free. How many collision domains would you have here? You have two collision domain here and the collision domain here. So the definition of a collision domain refers to the number of devices that can transmit data without a collision. If you have devices connected into a hub, all the devices are as one collision domain. One hub, one collision domain, the bridge separates it across. Bridges weren't really around for too long. And I tell you why, is because they just took the hub and they integrated it with the bridge and they made your switch. Instead of having these three devices, they will just say, well, let's integrate the fact that we've got lots of ports in the hub and we'll make these, these, these hubs that have lots of ports a layer two device. And then the switch is born. So let's uh, have a look at how a switch switches. So with a switch, every port is its own separate collision domain which allows for full duplex communication. So let's say we have this guy here. A, uh, da, 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 da. A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 and D, 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 okay? All connected into a switch, right? So the switch is gonna have a MAC address table. Let's build up a MAC address table here. And we'll have physical port one, zero, one, two, and three. Okay. So you yeah, have a look at the device here. AAA is connected to zero, BBB is one, CCC is two, and DDD is port three, yeah? Okay, so uh, let's say C, CCC, I'll just give them names, sometimes it's easier. Al here is on CCC and Bob is on DDD, right? So Al here wants to send a message across to Bob. Now I'm just keeping IP address details out of it because it's just gonna be confusing. I just wanna explain how it switch, switches. After the break, I'll try and put everything together to incorporate IP address and ARP and MAC address and all of that good stuff. So you got the source MAC address is C, 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 C. You got your destination MAC address, which is D, 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 okay? Now, remember, the one thing to remember, a switch updates its MAC address table based on what? Switch updates its MAC address table based on the source MAC address of the frame. Okay, so this frame here goes into ports two on the switch. 
The MAC address table on the switch at the moment is empty because it hasn't listened to anything. It hasn't received any information. So the switch's MAC address table is, is, how can it know what MAC addresses are connected into it when it hasn't received any communication? So this frame comes into the switch on port number two and the switch goes, oh, I'll have a device connected to me on port number two and its source MAC address is CCCC. So zero, one, two, and three. So it'll go, oh, port number two has a source MAC address of CCCC. How did it know that? Because it looks at the source MAC address of the frame here. And is there a device connected to port two on the switch with a MAC address of CCC? Yes, it is. So it works. Now, the switch doesn't know where DDDD is because it doesn't have any reference to DDDD in its MAC address table. So what does the switch do? It sends the, this frame out all ports. It's going to send it out port zero, port one, port three. So a broadcast, is it? It's a broadcast. It's not an ARP. It's just a broadcast. An ARP is when a PC doesn't know the MAC address of an, uh, of an IP. Switches will not ARP because switches don't know what an IP address is. ARP is IP to MAC. Remember, switches do not know what an IP address is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a broadcast, but it's not an ARP. Does that make sense? Yep. So in this case, because switch doesn't know where DDD lives, it, the only way it can get this frame to DDDD is by sending it out port zero, port one, and port three. It will not send it out port two. Why? Because the frame came in on port two in the first place. So Al will receive, or so so AAA will receive it, BBB will receive it, and DDD will receive it. So, but AAAA and BBBB will ignore it, and because it's not for them. But BBB, so Bob on port three will get it, and will 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 want to respond back. Let me just kind of run out of space here. So Bob responds back. Source IP, D, 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 source, sorry, excuse me, source Mac, D, 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 destination Mac, C, 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 C. What's going to happen? It's going to go in to the switch on port three. The switch is going to go, ah, now I've just received a frame coming into me on port three with a source MAC address of C of DDDD. Let me update my MAC address table. I've just received the frame coming into me on port three with a MAC address of DDDD. Now I know what the MAC address of, now I know that the device connected to me on port three is DDDD. Then it looks at the destination MAC, which is CCCC, and says, ah, where does CCC live? CCC lives in port two. So we'll just send that out port two. Is that okay, guys? Yep. It will do the same thing with AAAA, and we'll do the same thing with BBBB. But it doesn't, the switch won't go out and actively find out the MAC addresses of AAAA and BBBB. The switch just waits. It just lies there and says, well, I'm going to wait. And when I receive some sort of communication from a device is when I will update the MAC address table. You're not, a switch is not going to be waiting long. If you think about it, if I started running Wireshark on my PC now, it will be a millisecond before the first frame. Like, look, how, look at how much stuff is running here in the background. Go to Task Manager. Look at all these processes. 
these are all sending even zoom but like these are all sending ones it's lots of ones and zeros of vast and you'll have lots of online stuff so like a switch is, is not going to have to wait very long before it finds out the mac address of any pc especially modern day pcs modern day pcs are always sending out information out to the switch or out to the internet so just say just say you swap swap ports around it'll fairly it'll update itself fairly quickly it, will update decide it, it happens within milliseconds switches are extremely fast at doing this they, you know they use a, a protocol called asics application specific integrated circuitry which means that it can actually near it was not nearly nearly send these frames at wire speed just so basically the ones and zeros it's it nearly go it, you know the switch just hardly slows it down it's extremely fast think of um so it uses what's known as ac ics application specific integrated circuitry good easy way to remember it is the, the runners <laughs> ones and zeros running really fast around the switch um yeah so all so how many ports do you have now? How many collision domains do you have? In this diagram here. Uh, one every port. Three. Four. Four. Four collision domains. Yeah. Four Each collision port domains. Is on. Yeah. Yeah. So the way to remember it is every port is uh, on a switch is a, is a separate collision domain. Every port on a switch can send and receive information at the same time without any collision. It won't have collisions. If, if you see collisions on your switch, there's something wrong. There's a duplex mismatch or there's an issue with the NIC or something that something is happening. The ports need to get reset, but typically it'll be a duplex mismatch that one port is set for half duplex and the other is set for full duplex or something like that. All right. Uh, I'm going to just pause this here. There was a lot there going on. Um, the ARP table is stored on a PC. The operating system of a PC will store an ARP table. And it's basically a device that I have communicated with and its IP address and its corresponding MAC address. That my PC here, let's say I'm PC A, has a chi or I've learned from the ARP process. So I've sent a broadcast message out to all the devices on my LAN segment because the broadcast only goes as far as all devices within the same network segment to find out the MAC address of 192.168.1.10. 192.168.1.10 responded back to me and told me that its MAC address was 00E0B06D6A50. I learned that from ARP. It was dynamically learned. Dynamic means automatically learned. Okay. The DAT differs from a switch. The switch, the MAC address table on a switch, has nothing got to do with ARP. You won't see in on a layer two switch, you won't see any information about, well, IP except for a configuration of it. We'll talk about that in maybe tomorrow or next week. So the MAC address table is stored on a switch and it's the physical port and the corresponding MAC address that we learned that we just went through just there before the, the break there. Okay. When a switch receives a frame on um let me see if I can just draw this here. Uh, So if I go on to connect it, let's say I've got a switch here. You can see that there, yeah? I'm, 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 can you see Microsoft Painter? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. So let's we got zero FA. Let 
Smith PC here and the PC over here and zero slash five and zero slash 10. Um, the back address of this guy is zero B nine D and the MAC address of this guy here is six A five zero. Okay, I'm just putting in the last characters. So what will happen is when this switch receives a frame from this guy here, the source MAC address is going to be zero B nine D. The switch will go, oh, I'm just after receiving a frame coming into me on physical port zero slash five. Let me update zero slash five has zero B nine D. So the MAC address table is populated by the switch based on the source MAC address of the incoming frame. Switches update the MAC address table based on the source MAC address of the frame as it comes in. Okay, it sends it across. If, so in this case, if this guy here was talking to 6A50, destination is going to be 6A50. The switch doesn't know where 6A50 is. It does, because it doesn't, well, let's say if the switch's MAC address table is blank, what will it do? It's going to send it out all ports. Until this guy responds back. Once this guy responds back, then it's going to update the MAC address table. Okay. That's what we're going to do now anyway. We're going to look at instances. We're going to use Packet Tracer. We're going to look at instances um, where we're going to see this. So one second. Okay, so here we have Bob and Joe, yeah? Um, Bob is connected 192.168.1.5. He's connected to zero slash five. Joe is 192.168.1.10. It's connected to zero slash 10. Now, obviously you don't have to be, I'm just keeping this thing to try and make it as simple as possible to understand. So let's look at this whole process. Well, actually, we're going to do a snip here on this. Um, I'm just paint on this. Okay, so we got Bob and Joe, yeah. So let's say Bob here wants to communicate with Joe. So it opens up frame. Do you walk you win the air and you open up a ping and you say source IP? One nine two one six eight dot one dot five. Destination IP address. 192.168.1.10 source MAC address, put the MAC in red 0B9D destination MAC. Now let's have a look at Bob here. Uh, it's just too many open things over there. So look at Bob here. Going to Bob, going to desktop, going to uh, command prompt, I do arp space minus A. 
So Bob doesn't have any ARP entries. So that means he's never communicated with Joe before. He's never talked to Joe. So he doesn't know the MAC address of Joe. Now he knows what his own MAC address is. You do an IP config space forward slash all. And you can see IP config all space forward slash all has all this information about Bob. You can see his IP address, 192.1.5. Um, oh, yes, yes. Um, and its MAC address there is 0B9D. So that's the frame that is going to be built from Bob. But it's missing Joe because we've done an ARP table on, on Bob there. And, and Bob's operating system says, I don't know. I've, I've nothing in my ARP table. So I haven't communicated with anyone yet. So this frame is empty. So we can't send. This is the ping packet. We talked about this. We, this is the, we talked about this. I want to kind of talk about ARP, how a, a PC ARPs, but I also want to talk about what the switch does. I want to put basically the last um, two hours that we discussed and put it all together, if that makes sense. So this is your ping which is our echo request, part of the ICMP protocol. But it's blank, it's missing some information. Paused, okay? We can't send the ping to Joe when we don't have the MAC address of Joe's PC here. So what has to happen? A NARP message has to be sent. We're being lazy here. And the ARP message is going to say, but the ARP message is automatically sent by Bob's PC, and its job is to find out the MAC address of 1.10. So source IP 1.5, destination IP 1.10, source MAC address 0B9D, destination MAC address is going to be FFFFFF. And the content is going to say, what is Mac of 1.10? The content is say, what is the Mac address of 192.168.1.10? OK. So you have this, you have this. So the ARP message is going to, it will be sent first, yeah? Is that OK? Everyone knows that. So the ARP message is going to go in to the switch on zero slash five. Now, what is the switch? The switch is going to have nothing in it. Let's say the switch is only booted up two. So the switch has nothing in its MAC address table. MAC address table is completely empty. So what the switch will do will say, oh, I'm just after receiving a frame coming in to me on port five. 0 slash 5 with a source MAC address of 0B9D. So the switch will say 0 slash 5 is equal to 0B9D. This is the MAC address table on the switch. Then the switch will look at the destination MAC address, which says FFFFFFF. Again, that's how the switch is able to switch. Basically, this is telling the switch, send it everywhere. So the switch will send it out all the other ports. If we had a fully populated switch, it would send it out the other 23 ports. So everyone will, will get, everyone is going to get it, except for 0 slash 5, because it came in on 0 slash 5. Okay. So this is going to go across to Joe. Joe PC is going to respond back Let's copy this paste this in 
So source IP address is going to be 192.168.1.10. Destination IP address is going to be 192.168.1.5. Just remove the Mac here. So source IP one nine two one six eight one dot ten. Destination IP address 192.1.5. Source MAC address is 6A50. Destination MAC address is 0B9D. Yeah. And basically, what is it? It's Joe telling. Bob, that his MAC address is zero. So basically, this is response back. So it's going to be Joe saying 1.10 is equal to 6A50. Yeah. So this is the ARP response. Come back in. So this frame is going to come back into zero slash 10. Source IP 1.10, destination IP 1.5. Remember, the switch has nothing to do with the black front. It only looks at the red. So this frame coming into the switch on 0 slash 10, so you go, oh, I'm just after receiving a frame coming into me on 0 slash 10. 0 slash 10 has the source MAC address. This frame has the source MAC address of 6850. Let me update my MAC address table. 6850, and then the switch goes, oh, well, where is it going to? It's going to 0B9D. Does, do I, do I, obviously I mean the switch, does the switch know where 0B9D is? Yes, it says 0B9D is connected to 0 slash 5. So this frame would be sent out 0 slash 5. The switch will record that information in the MAC address table. When Bob receives it, it will record his information in the ARP table. Isn't it amazing how quick they took me like 15 minutes to explain that? And that happens in like one tenth of a, of, of, of a second, that whole process. Sorry, I think this is just, just amazing. Um, okay, let's have a look. Do it in real life, or do it in real life on Packet Tracer. Uh, right, so let's do, okay, um, IP config. Yeah, so if I do R space minus A, no R entries. Okay, so this is Bob's PC, yeah? Go into the switch. Now, the switch may update something. That's just, actually what I'll do is I'm just gonna clear everything on the switch. Enable, config, uh, Okay, so do show MAC address table. Okay, so you see the switch's MAC address table is completely empty. Bob's ARP table is completely empty. So I'm gonna go in here and say ping space 192.168.1.10. Press enter. One, two, three, and four. Okay, one nine two one six one dot ten one two three four. Get four response back. And how long did it take? It took less than a millisecond. Now, if we do ARP space minus A, you have this is in Bob's operating system. It says one nine two one six one dot ten has the MAC address of six a five zero. If I go into Joe's PC. And do ARP minus A. 192.168.1.5 has a MAC address of 0B9D. 
This is Joe. Why? Because Joe has received a frame from 1.5 with 0 being ID. So it says he stores that in his MAC address table. Okay, ARP is what's stored on the operating system of a PC and keeps IP to MAC address information. Let's look at the switch. Show MAC address table. Then let's do show MAC address table. MAC address table on the switch is the physical port and the corresponding MAC address of the device that is connected to that physical port. Any questions on that? Okay, everyone all quiet. Okay, cool. Oh, good. Yeah, cool. All right, one second now. So I'm going to bring it up a bit more. And while that was relatively kind of straightforward, we're going to make things a little bit more complex. Why? Because we're going to add in a router. First of all, how many devices do we have? How many networks do we have now? One, two, three, three. Three networks? Mm -hmm. How many different subnets do we have? Two. Two. How many different networks do we have? Three. Two. Two. Subnet is a network. A network is a subnet. A subnet is a network. The subnet address represents the network. So remember, every device or every interface on a router is a member of a separate network. So we could have, let's say we have the red network here is 192.168.2.0. And the black network here is 192.168.1.0. We've got two interfaces, 1.1 and 2.1. Bob's IP address is 192.168.1.5. Yeah. What's Bob's default gateway? 192.168.2.1. One that one. One that one. You can't do yeah, The very first IP address is the usual address is the default gateway. So your default gateway is what is is typically going to be the IP address of the of the router that you are connected back into. And you're not directly connected to PC. Will rarely be directly connected into the router. It'll be the PC connected to switch, which will be connected into the router. But if you want to go or Bob wants to go to a different network, it must know his default gateway address, 1.1. Let me show you. Um, before I, I run a ping here, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to, now, basically, this, I have to set this up. So this ping should work, ping 192.168.2.5. You see your response. Why did it fail the first time? Because I had to ARP or even pretend to ARP. Okay, so we can see the second time around the ping, it's, there's no ARP messages because Bob has now found the details. Now I'm going to go in here though, I'm going to remove the default gateway. I'm going to remove the default gateway 192.1.1, and I'm going to rerun that ping. Is it going to work? No. No. Why? No gateway. 168.2.5. No gateway. No gateway address. 
no path. It's he, exactly he he's like Joe. He Joe was living in London. Bob is living in Dublin. Bob wants to go to Joe, but can't make his way to the airport. Doesn't know where the Dublin airport is. How can Bob go to London when he hasn't got the directions to get to Dublin airport? He can't. Because if you can't reach your Dublin, if you can't go to Dublin airport, you're not going to go to any other country. Ireland is quite a good example of this because we're on an island. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so we can't go anywhere else outside our own country unless we go to the Dublin airport. Would we be able to reach, would we be able to ping 1.1? Would a ping to 192 1.1 be correct? Well, Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Or no? There's no default gateway. No. No, no, no. Should have stuck with your original. <laughs> yes. Because both of them are on the same <laughs> network. Yeah. They're on the same. They're on the same. Both of them are on the same network. Yeah. Yeah. So your default gateway is, yeah, yeah. 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 Your default gateway is on the same network. So yeah. Sorry, guys. I just something. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's just that you won't go. You, uh, what about 2.1? No. No. Because 2.1 is on a different network than 1.5. Different gateway as well, yeah. Different network, different. Yeah, without the default gateway, it's not going to work. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put back in the default gateway, and then I'm going to start clearing stuff off here. Um, and we're going to have a look at this process. This process is a little bit more complex because we're using uh, minus F minus D. We're using extra devices here. So uh, 192.168.1.1. Cool. And let me just go into the switch here. Enable fair mark address table into the router. And go to the switch. I'm basically clearing everything off. So start again. So we're starting, we're assuming everything is just booted back up again. And all the MAC address tables, all the ARP tables of all the devices are cleared and Deleted. R minus D deletes everything. I gotta go into a PC here, my PC here, and type in command prompt and do R minus A. You see the R table. See here. This is this, so this is this is my who I'm communicating with. Um, okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this, do a snippet of this. Uh, new copy. I'm going to paint. One second, just delete everything here. Just paste this in. Okay, so let's look at this one. All right, so Bob is pinging Joe. So I open up the frame. So source IP, uh, source IP address is going to be. I'll put in black. Uh, put this in black font. Source IP one nine two one six eight dot one dot five. Destination IP address one nine two one six eight dot two dot five. Yeah. Source Mac. Um, source Mac. Red. Zero. 
zero B nine D and destination Mac is six four one eight. Okay. Okay, so no, it's not. Four six zero one. Four six zero one. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Source IP address one nine two one zero one dot five. Destination IP address 192.182.5. Source MAC 0B9D. Destination MAC. Well, hold on. What is it going to be? Well, first of all, Bob had nothing in his ARP table. We looked. Bob's ARP table is completely empty. So what does it need to do? It needs to ARP. What does it need to ARP for? FFF. All the voices. Of what? He needs to, he needs, so what's it going to be in the ARP table? It's going to ARP, what is the MAC address of what? Of the uh, IP 192.168.2.5. Of 192.168.2.5. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I need to get across to my default gateway. I need to ARP because you won't mag, ARP for the MAC address of the switch because he yeah. needs to mac, ARP for the MAC address of the router. If you have a look here, let's look at the router. I never really looked at this before. Our showing you this. Look at the router 1.1 and 2.1. You've got your IP address, but you've got specific, unique MAC addresses. This one here, this interface here is 4601. This MAC address here is 4602. So before Bob sends this ping, He has to send a MARP message. And it's going to be um, ARP. What is MAC of 192.168.1.1? Source IP 1.5, destination IP 1.1. Source MAC 0B9D, destination MAC. All oh, yes. Our MAC address is going to be what is the MAC address 192.1.1. So what's going to happen is the router then is going to respond. So this frame, by the way, is going to go into the switch on whatever port says 0 slash 5. And the switch is going to do what? Update the MAC address table. Because they will say, oh, I've just received a frame coming into me on 0 slash 5 with a source MAC address of 0 B9D. So the switch will go. The Mac, so this switch will say zero slash five has a Mac of zero B90. Then it says, oh, this needs to go out everywhere. So the switch will send it out all ports. Goes into the router. Then the router looks and it says, oh, somebody wants to know the Mac address of 192.168.1.1. The router goes, I'm 192.168.1.1. So let me respond back. So the router is going to respond back, ARP, and with an ARP, it's an ARP response, and it's going to say, one dot one as Mac of four six zero one. One dot one has Mac of four six zero one. So the router responds back to Bob and says, "Hey Bob, the Mac address of me. This is your router. 
no, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, let me just change some of this details. Source IP is now going to be 1.1. .1. The destination IP address is 1.5. Source MAC is going to be 4601. The destination MAC is going to be 0B9D. And this is coming from the router. goes into the switch. What's the switch going to do? The switch is going to go, oh, well, I've just received a frame coming into me on this port here, which is, let's say, port one on the switch. And this port here has a source MAC address of 4601. Now I know that the device connected to me on this port has a MAC address of 4601. And then the switch will go, where is 0B9D? So remember, the switch already knew that 0B9D was connected to this physical port. So it just sends it out here. So dipping, we're, we're, so where are we? We're, we're just basically here. We haven't sent the ping to the default gateway yet because we didn't know the MAC address of our default gateway. So we had to send an ARP message to find out the MAC address of 1.1. .1. The default gateway responded back and said his MAC address was 4601. Now we can actually put in the MAC address of the ping. Remember what we talked about last week, MAC address to find your local destination, your Pings local Pings network lower, transmission. Yeah. So the switches only care about local communication. So source is zero being ID destination is going to be four six zero one. Okay. So where are we now? All right. And um, so this ping now we can send it to force ping. Let me just delete some of this here. I'll just bring it down a bit down here. Okay. So this ping with this information goes in to the switch. The switch says, oh, you're going to 4601. It knows to send it to the router. So this ping goes into the router. What is the router going to do as we talked about last week? MAC address is define your local destination. The switch will send it out. The IP is global. Exactly, IP is, is global. So this, the router here will say, I need to send this out, this interface here marked 2.1. Does that make sense? It's going out of this interface now. Mm -hmm. But what is needs to be changed? The source and destination. Of the, of the IP and MAC. The, no, the IP the, the stays the same. Also the MAC, the MAC, yeah. Yeah, the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. The source MAC address will be changed to? 4602. 4602. The destination MAC address is going to get changed to? 6418. Ah, but if our router here has never talked to Joe. Yeah, yeah, it has to be ARP. If the router has to ARP, the router has to say, ARP, what is the MAC address of? FFFF. 192.168.2.5. So this. Let me just going to change this here. So this app is going to say, this router is going to say, what, uh, source IP 192.168.2.1. Now for a lot of stuff going on here. Source IP 192.168.2.1. Destination IP. 192.168.2.5. Our bot is the MAC address of five. Source MAC address is going to be 4602.
The destination MAC address is going to be FFFFF. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot in it. So this frame is generated. So bar ping is temporary pause because it's paused because the router can't send this across to 2.5 because it doesn't know the MAC address of 2.5. So the router has to send another ARP coming from itself to Joe to find out the MAC address of 2.5. So this goes into the switch. Meanwhile, the switch is going to say, oh my God, I've just received a message from a device connected to me on port one of the switch here with a source MAC address of 4602. Let me update my MAC address table. FFFFF, it sends it out everywhere. So it'll send it across to Joe. Joe's PC will respond back. Source MAC is going to be 2.5. Destination MAC is going to be. Do not one. Sorry, source IP 2.5, destination IP 2.1. Source MAC is going to be 641E. And destination MAC is going to be 4602. So the source MAC is going to be 641E. Actually, put it in red. Destination MAC address is going to be 4602. Okay. Any questions on that, guys? So once Bob and Joe have spoken to each other for the first time, and I'll see everything has been recorded on the app and everything else, that, that process will, will never ha ever happen again. They can just you can just ping directly from Bob to to Joe, to, because the Mac tables have been populated. Yes, but they they all they also get cleared. They get cleared every well. It depends on the device, but the, the Mac address table and the switch will get cleared every couple of minutes. All right. So okay. remember, it's nothing, you know, it's Time nothing. Wise, yeah, of course, yeah. It's something off, yeah. Yeah. So it's nothing for a, a device, you know what I mean? This is just, this is what it does. It, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's it's much more difficult for me to explain this than, than the process behind it. Well, like, like I was, um, like, you know, this is what, this is what, this is what they do. This is their thing. Do you know what I mean? So let me, well, let's, let's go through the whole lot. Start again. Let's go into Bob here. Let's do R minus A. See, has he got anything in here? Oh, we see there. No, okay, so he's got the MAC address of his default out. Let's clear off everything there. Okay, let's run a ping. Okay, so I'm going to ping 192.168.2.5. Now, what will happen is Packet Tracer will simulate an ARP, will simulate the first ARP, will it be a timeout? Why? Because if the ping doesn't, it takes a little bit longer to respond back, then it will time out. But the next ping and the next ping after that and the next ping will come through. So the first ping is simulated as a timeout because it took too long for the ARP messages to get back. Oh. I didn't even respond back. Okay, so we're picking two to five. Okay, well, let's have a look at things then. So now we can now we're doing ARP minus A. Minus A A. And you can see that Bob has learned the MAC address of his default gateway. 192.1.1 is 4601. Then we go into the switch. What's going to be on the switch? Enable show MAC address table.
you've got FA0 slash 1 has the MAC address of 4601. FA0 slash 5 has the MAC address of 0B9D. Yeah. This is switch A. Switch A only cares about the MAC addresses on its switch. Switch A doesn't know anything about the MAC addresses over in this network here. Why, do, why should it? It's like a taxi driver in Dublin. Taxi driver in Dublin isn't going to know any maps in London. Let the cabbie in London look after that. Taxi driver in Dublin only cares about local traffic. Bob wants to get a, a, a taxi from him to the airport, the Dublin, to Dublin airport, the taxi driver will do that. No problem. You'll never get lost. Okay, so you can see that there. But the Dublin airport, that needs to know about flights, local flights and cross flights. Okay, so we're going to a router. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a continuous ping because I'm, I'm talking too slow and what will happen is the information will get removed. So let me just ping minus T. Minus T basically means it will keep sending pings. So I got a creak in my neck from looking at the screen all day. Um, okay, so let's go into the router. Let's see what the router knows. What do you think the router will know? What does, need to, what does the router need to know? Well, it needs to know everything. No, it's the IP. It needs to, yeah, because the router is IP and Mac. So if I do a show ARP, the router knows everything. It says, I know the IP address of 192.1.1, which is my local physical interface of zero slash zero. And I know the MAC address of that is 4601. I didn't learn that because the MAC address is the one that's built into that NIC card. IP address 1.1. 1 1.5, how did it learn about that? From ARP. It knows about that IP address for the last 90 minutes. 2.1, this IP here. 2.5 is Joe over here. We go into the switch here. Enable, show, Mac address table, and you have the switch here, only cares with local information to it. 4602 and 6418. All right. Yep. Okay, any questions on that guys? Good to go. Yeah, fine. Okay, cool. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Give me a second here on this net one sec. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to uh, Cisco's iOS, the command line. Going to get you to, has everybody installed Packet Tracer? No. No, OK, cool. What I'm going to do is I, I'm going to get you to install it tomorrow. Um, um, let me just see here. Uh, if you can install it on your laptop for tomorrow, that would be great. Um, because we're going to do a lab tomorrow on it. Um, it will, a bit of a lab, and then we're going to be doing a lab next week as well. So let me just... Da, da, da. Did I give you the... the uh, I'm going to put into chat here where the address is. One second, guys.
Cisco Met Academy. You don't have to sit through the two-hour course. Um, no, um, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, so you go in here, Cisco Net Academy. So what you have to do is you have to get a login. Uh, login. So I will, yeah. Okay, fine. Just, 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 just log me in, is it? Go. Cool. Um, so in here, you go in, and um, so let me, let me just put this into chat. So you're going to have to log in or create a login or create a profile. They can give you a Cisco ID. Give you a Cisco ID in it. I'm not sure if you actually get a Cisco ID. Um, no, an Academy ID. You actually don't get a Cisco ID. No. Um, okay, cool. So um, you need to go into uh, my NetAcad and if you get into free courses. Don't worry about the free courses. And there's Packet Tracer 8.1.0. So click on that. You can see here it has a, two, a new two-hour course. Um, don't worry about that. Download the latest version. And there you have the options. So you can have Windows, Ubuntu, or Mac. Either Windows 64-bit or 32-bit. Jesus, I, I, you most, I, I, I don't think. You want to be an old PC to have 32-bit. So download that one there, 64-bit. Um, once you install it, then you can register and log into it. It was free as well, yeah? Okay, but don't worry about that now, guys. We're, I'm going to show you, uh, we'll, we'll do a, uh, um, we'll do a lab on that tomorrow. We'll do an hour, uh, an hour lab on that tomorrow. For now, um, let me just introduce you to uh, the Cisco IOS, okay? So our, it will start off anyway somewhat. Just call some of this here. Okay, so Cisco IOS stands for Internetwork Operating System. So it's command line, it's CLI. So it's a way of configuring your, your, your devices. I mean, even now, even nowadays, you're still configuring. You want to configure a Cisco device, you you know, you do it over your CLI. Either you do it over CLI even, or um, a program will do it. But or if even network automation, it will still be done over CLI, it's still over text. The reason why it uses CLI is because command lines use far less resources than a GUI. So it frees up the resources to do the actual switching. Yeah. And um, think about how much process it takes to move a mouse around the PC and type, you know, and double click and drag and drop and stuff like that. Command line is much better, it's much easier. Once you get used to it, it's, it's much more streamlined. You learn the commands and you don't need to know all of the commands, just to need to know enough basic commands in order to learn your way around the device. The same commands will appear on a Cisco switch and on a router. So if you can configure a Cisco switch, then you can configure a router and you should also know a way around, you know, it doesn't change, it changes a little bit with Juniper. But while the commands might be different on a Juniper router, let's say on a Cisco switch, it use very similar protocols because they all have to use the same protocols because you connect the Cisco switch to a Juniper router uh, or you connect a Cisco router to a Juniper router. They have to be able to talk together in a language that both of them can understand. Now, let me just grab a switch here and show you. So how you normally will connect into a switch. 
for the first time. Can you ever see this here? I don't know, let's see, I'm put myself. I can't see myself in the camera here, so yeah. So you got your switch, lots and lots of ports, this is your standard 2950 switch. And if you have a look here, you got your ports, you got your Ethernet ports. At the very last two ports here, you got your gigabit ports here. So this would be where typically you connect into your, your router, whereas the other 24 ports, these are four 24 ports here, are fast Ethernet, 100 meg. These two here are gigabit connections. So if you want to connect your switch for the very first time, the switch will, you need to use the cable like this. Console cable, yeah. Blue console cable. It's a rollover cable. So you connected one end into your your PC, and now you won't have this. You'll have a USB to serial converter, and the other end will go into the back of the switch. See where it says console port. Anything like that. Make it in the back of your switch like that. Okay, so one end goes into your PC, and the other end goes back into your switch. So you connect it in, you power it up. How do you access your switch? You need to download a program called Putty. And um, well, I'm sure I will, we'll probably do that uh, tomorrow, actually, because. Um, It'll take a while. I have to find out. To, I have to. I have to dig up the the, the connections. And um, but you download a putty, which will allow you to um to connect into your switch for the first time. So what I'll do is just show, show you this on Packet Tracer. So you got a console cable, as we talked about. Plug it into the serial end. Now PC, your 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 these serial ends are are gone. You won't see them around anymore, really. Um. They were used to be very, very handy. I mean, mechanics still use them for doing um, it's for doing some of the, the, the car tests, for connecting the PC into the car. They'll have these, uh, the, the computers connecting these serial end of, of, of um, connections. Um, and then you connect it to RG45. It will physically fit in to the port on the front of the switch, but it won't work, okay? This blue console port connects into the console port on the switch here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so you connect in. Packet tracer here. View two bars, bottom two bar, grab a switch. So I'm just simulating what will what would look like in, in in the real life. You got your PC here, you got your switch, this guy here, down here, 2960. You get your console connection. You connect that into RS232, which is your serial port. And then while you have all these ports, you only use the console port. Okay. So if in the real world, you won't connect, the only way to connect into the switch is not the switch directly, you have to use your PC. Connect the console cable into the PC, turn on the switch. If this switch is brand new, it's not gonna have any details on it. Click on the PC. Here is where you'd have, if this is a real PC, as opposed to the PC on Packet Tracer, you'd have putty or you'd have what's known as a terminal emulator. Um, so click on terminal, click on OK, and I want my switch. Okay, so free terminal, uh, free, you used to be, remember, I don't know, show me age now, um, years and years and years ago, Windows 95 had something called HyperTerm, which is a way of connecting in to um, other devices. You were using, I maybe, maybe give it a on the, on on the Windows 95. <laughs> on, on the uh, board rating, is it always 9600? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, always for oh, uh, yeah, for a Cisco that can change. 
Sometimes yeah. it's one nine two zero zero as well, depending on your device. But usually Cisco devices are ninety six hundred. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Um, and that's a very important when you're connecting into other devices. Like sometimes if you if you get a PC and you need to connect it to like a PDU in a data center, and um, the PDU might use a baud rate of one nine two zero zero, and it can be very confusing at the start because all of a sudden you can't get in. And you know it, it, you have to change the baud rate. Um, so baud rate is, is 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 I suppose is the speed in which the ones and zeros can be sent across, um, and depending on the device will um, let's just sort of click in here again. You can see it. So the baud rate bits per second. So some devices will have a higher baud rate, and it means that if you set the wrong baud rate, it won't connect in. But for Cisco, it's 9600. 9600 is, is usually your, your, your default anyway. I remember years ago, you had to know this stuff and the exam, not so much now. I, oh, does it still work? Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, oh, God. Um, I didn't know that now. Uh, um, there you go. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for that. Um, okay, so there's three main modes on a Cisco switch. Okay, I'm going to go through these again and again and again. Um, the first mode, when you connect into your switch for the first time, you got user mode. Okay, so user mode, you know you're in user mode because it's going to say, connect in here, switch, and it'll have a greater than sign. So when you connect in here, you're going to see switch and a greater than sign. That's user mode. So user mode is very, very basic mode. You can't do anything with it. It's usually used as a stepping stone to go from user mode into a more advanced mode, such as privilege mode. Okay. So when you connect into your switch for the first time, You will connect to user mode. You will know you're in user mode because it will say switch and the greater than sign. Okay. One of the kind of the, the, the main stumbling blocks is at the start is just getting used to the command and used to the modes. Different commands will work on different modes. But you, so it's not a case you just need to learn the commands, you need to learn the command and the mode that you need to be in in order to execute that command. For example, I'm in user mode. One of the commands that you'll type in, in so let's say, um, let me say da, 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 config space T. That won't work. Why? Because it's, it's a very, very common command, but it's not a command that you execute in user mode. You've only got a set amount of commands available in user mode. Now, in order to see what commands you can use, you just press the question mark. And this gives you the command and the description. You can see here, there's not that many uh, commands in here. You've got connect, disable, disconnect, enable. There's very, very little because user mode is a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone into more advanced modes, such as privilege mode and global mode, global config mode. How do you go from user mode into privilege mode? Type enable, press enter. So you type enable and press enter uh, on your switch, and that will bring you from user mode into privilege mode. Let me show you. So, so E-N-A-B-L-E, press enter. And the change is very, you know, somebody can't see it if you're not, if you, if you're, if you're not used to it. But I'm in privilege mode now. Why? How do I know that? Because it says a switch and a hashtag. Hashtag is privilege mode. The greater than sign is user mode. If I press the question mark now, 
We've got more commands, much more commands. Does that make sense? So question mark shows you what commands I can execute and what mode. Again, we'll go back up here. User mode only had whatever, 10 commands or so. Here, we've got three times or twice the commands. Now, if this was a real switch, we'd have far more commands, much, much more commands. But this is a packet tracer. It's only a simulator. But the commands are complete. The commands in user mode are different than the commands in privilege mode. Okay, you can do more. Privilege mode is typically used for file management, for deleting files, for saving files, for showing information about the device. If you all, all your show commands operate in privilege mode. So if you want to find anything about the switch, you, you run your commands in privilege mode. Like you've probably seen me earlier on doing show MAC address table. That's in privilege mode. So if I want to find out the MAC address table of the switch, I do it in privilege mode. If I want to find out anything about the switch, show clock, show run, show ARP, show CDB neighbor, show, show IP routes, they're all done in privilege mode. And again, by the way, guys, this is not just applicable to the switches, it's also applicable to the routers, okay? So these three main modes that we have in the switch, we also have the same modes on a router. So user mode, type enable, press enter. You know you're in user mode because it has a greater than sign. Then the switch and the hashtag, Hashtag, it brings you into privileged mode. Your show commands. If you So your privileged mode is all about file management. Just file management. Deleting files. Saving files. Um, it's also about all your show commands. I ran from privilege mode. So all your show commands are around from privilege mode. If you want to find anything about the switch, you have to do it in privilege mode. So then I want to go from privilege mode into global configuration mode. There's a different command I type, config space T. File management, oh, Jesus. Um, let's see. Just delete that. So I mean, okay. So your so privilege mode is for your file management, delete files, save the files. Then I want to go from privilege mode into global configuration mode. I type config space t on the switch or the router. Press enter. Go through this much more detail tomorrow. And that would bring you into global configuration mode. You know you're in global configuration mode because it's going to say switch and config. So config space T or conf space T. By the way, you can do quest, you can you can use shortcuts. As long as there's no ambiguity, what do I mean? Let's go back again. Let's go back into privilege mode. So I have two. I have two commands that start with con: configure and connect. Yeah, conf and conn. Right. So if I type in con and press enter the switch is going to say ambiguous command. Why? Because the switch is going to say, I don't know whether you want to use connect or configure. Why? Because there's two commands that start with C-O-N. When I type in C-O-N-F, well, now that has to be configure. And I type in C-O-N-F and space question mark. And the switch says, 
There is only one word that can go after com, and that's terminal. So the question mark is really, really useful. If you're doing labs, and you'll be doing labs and homework during the week, um, use your question mark. Use the question mark, because it'll show you what command is available at what mode. So con config space T or conf space T, it brings me into global configuration mode. If I type in show MAC address table, is that going to work? In global, in config space T? No. Why? Because I'm in the wrong mode. It's the right command, but I'm in the wrong mode. None of your show commands work in global configuration mode. I have to type it in, in privilege mode. Only works in privilege mode. Okay. Any questions on that, guys? I don't want to go too in depth into it because I we're going to be doing a lot um, tomorrow over it. So just as most homework, if you can install, definitely install Packet Tracer tomorrow for uh, for before tomorrow's class at eight o'clock. Yeah, and um, let me bring over this. There's, I'll have the video installed on the, the material as well. You can go into day two, go into your tutorials. There's introduction to ethernet, what a collision domain is, how, what ARP is, how a switch learns MAC addresses, how to change your IP address on Windows 7. Windows 10 is still applicable. Introduction to your, your local area networks. So we've got all these tutorials. The tutorials are fairly, fairly Concise. We talked about this. To I, 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 uh, triple E. Um, some of your land types. User mode and privilege mode, and R versus bank address and switch passwords. Don't worry about the switch password. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. All right. Is there any questions, guys, on anything that we covered today? There was a lot of stuff we covered earlier on. We talked about how a device ARPs, and um, ARP is IP to Mac, and um, it needs to know. Actually, one other thing as well, right? Let me just show you this, right, before we go. Okay, let me just... Da, 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 da. Just opening up some web pages here, okay? I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so I got another number of different web pages. No, oh, a second. Uh, okay. So we have the journal, we have BBC, we have breaking news, and we have RTE there, yeah. So if I go in here and I go I go into a command prompt, uh, where's it going? Okay. And I type in R space minus A. Am I going to know the? Is my PC going to know the MAC address of the server in the journal, or the server of BBC, or the server of the Independent, or the server of RTE? Nope. No, why not? Because, <clears throat> know them. because it's, it doesn't need to know the MAC address. It only needs to know the MAC address of my default gateway. Because it, it can't reach. I can't. I need to know the IP address of the journal and of our BBC and of, uh, of the independent and RTE. But I only need to know limited MAC addresses. I need to know if I'm communicating devices on my network, I need to know these. So these are all the devices on my local LAN segment. That I've learned off. They're basically my IoT stuff, smart TV and bits and bobs like that. They're on my network, yeah? A couple of PCs and stuff. If I need to reach the journal or independent, I need to know the MAC address of my default gateway because that's where I send it to. Because I can't get my PC in here in my house, I can't get to 
the BBC webpage unless I first of all send this across to my default gateway. When I send it to my default gateway, it will my router will send it to my ISP's router, who will send it to another ISP's router, who will send it to another ISP's router that happens to host the server that is uh, on the, the BBC webpage. Okay, there was a lot 